Bible journaling ideas. Sometimes it feels like I have all the creative ideas and I have all the creative feels and I'm just ready to dive into God's word. But then other times it feels like I have zero inspiration, zero creativity, and I need that kind of, mm. well, typically I love to provide you guys with all the Bible journaling inspiration and all the crafty ideas. But lately I've been in a creative rut. I can't seem to find a good idea that I like. I got on my email list and I asked you guys to send in your Bible journaling ideas. Today we're gonna get all of the Bible journaling ideas from you guys. Let's begin. One of my least favorite videos that I've ever posted on here was the one where I was trying to make Bible journaling stamps. Part of me really didn't want to post that video because I really didn't find a good stamp making solution. But sometimes Bible journaling can get just really messy and not perfect and that's okay, right? Y'all know that is my mantra. Well, I don't know if this did it, but my ultimate goal was to try to inspire you guys with like ideas and creativity to just jump in and dive into God's word and take delight in diving into God's word, right? But since that video, I have been a little bit more careful to practice my ideas a few times before putting it on film. Because of that, it's taken me more time to truly come up with ideas for you guys. Y'all know YouTube can quickly become like a job, right? I need to post a video and I need to provide you guys with a creative idea. But it hit me the other day. What if I took y'all's ideas? Y'all are always sending me beautiful pictures or tagging me or our Patreons. We have a Facebook page and we're posting all of our pictures. So that's what we're doing today. Come over here at my computer. First off today, we have Steph. Steph sent me this beautiful red it looks like it's a tip-in, which means you just put glue on the edge of the page and stick it in your Bible. It looks like a thicker craft paper, but she has a beautiful quote in the center. She has fire in her soul. Grace flows abundantly from her heart. She's brave and kind. Her heart is true. She lives her purpose every day. She inspires hope and leads with her brilliant light. So cute. And it says, Superwoman. I'm assuming this is Proverbs 31. It looks like it is. And then she ends with just like a little prayer. And she said, don't leave me the same father. Help me fully rely on you. I love how simplistic and focused it is. It's really cool how she used the play on colors. Like red really grabs our attention. It's hard to not look at the red. It's a red page. So then she has these white and black quotes and letters and words that pop off the page and really dial you into the message that she's wanting to create. I love how she made it less about perfect art or doing like a whole like, you know, mural, but rather she focused on the genuine response to the passage. Thank you, Steph, for sending this. I love that you are open enough to like share a prayer, which is just so cool. Next up, this is from Carrie. She says, this little bird was made with a stamp and I just did some watercolor over top. I love that idea, like mixing the mediums. I wrote a prayer on the back of it. The clipboard card was stuck in with washi tape. I started writing on the square of scrapbook paper on the bottom right, but it was way too small. So I just kept taping pieces together <laughs> you can see expanded below I love this like almost accordion <laughs> note I've showed this multiple times before but at the beginning of Romans my professor just kept going and going and saying way more notes than usual and so I just have so many notes it's that same kind of accordion notes but I think it's so cute Oh, she put in this hymn page, what a friend we have in Jesus. I love that. My church sings hymns and I just love that idea of like the deep theology that can be in hymns oftentimes. And I love that you put it there in your Bible because it obviously related to whatever you were studying here in Matthew. So I love that idea. You're using it like scrapbook paper because it's like, artsy like it's gorgeous the notes and everything but it also has that like general message like Jesus is our friend in fact here's a fun thing that I've recently been learning and kind of getting obsessed with is every hymn has like a really good story behind it so I would encourage you like if this is your favorite hymn or if you have a favorite hymn google the background story behind those hymns because oftentimes there's like really good sanctifying stories behind why the hymn was written and what the person was going through and it's just like really cool oh and she did like another cool fold out a accordion thing on this page in Psalm 36. Love this. Oh, okay. So it's like a note on what the fountain of life is. That is a really cool idea to go through fountain of life and study, you know, all the times it's mentioned in scripture and what exactly it means and what it means for us today and what it means in light of the cross. Like, oh, love that. I need to do that. Thank you, Carrie. What beautiful Bible pages. Next up, this is from Kyla. She has an Instagram account, so I wanna make sure to give her credit where credit is due. Her Instagram, Kyla Kamenar. This is a beautiful Bible journaling page. This is my journal the word Bible. 
it has that two inch margin. And this is pretty typical or classic for Bible journaling Bibles where they have that two inch margin. What's interesting here is even though she, she has just a two inch margin, she was able to make bigger art because she's in the Psalms. You know, the Psalms are poems. So the script is shorter and that gives you even more space to get even more creative. Here she chose a specific verse to kind of put legs to. She made it kind of an artsy, reflective piece of art that helped her visualize what she was contemplating and meditating on. I actually did this this past Sunday. Joe had mentioned this verse in Haggai with the signet ring. It says that the Lord declares that he's gonna make us a signet ring for he's chosen us. And so Joe, my husband, had used the imagery of like a football state championship ring or whatever, how it has the player's number, it has their high school name on it. And it's like that, we're like permanently his. It's a similar idea and concept there that we are permanent in Christ and it's personalized and that we're his. And so I felt it was needed to draw that picture so I don't forget that imagery that had hit me so hard. And it's like what she's doing here. With the letter O, she turned it into a light bulb, which is just so cute, I love it. Your word is a lamp. And she carried that theme of light, highlighting the word lamp in yellow. She wrote just kind of like a summary statement. That's a really good way to get into Bible journaling if you're new and you don't know what to write, is just to really focus on a specific verse or a specific section and summarize it with like a general idea or general statement. So thank you, Kyla. You guys go follow her on Instagram and share the love. Oh, and then she sent a video. I didn't know this. Okay. Wow. Oh, it looks like she has an extra wide Bible. I love that. Yeah, so in this video, she shows how in Psalm 119, she did a lot of summarize. God is always willing to help us. We just have to call on him. I'm really curious what her highlighting patterns were. Kayla, if you're watching this, will you comment down below what the colors that you highlighted with symbolize? So next up, this is from Alana. Wow, okay. Alana, your Bible is gorgeous. Like this page in Galatians, she's kind of taken a summary of the book and written it across the top of the page. And then along the left side, she once again has that two inch margin. She's even used sticky notes to kind of summarize blocks of scripture. I love like the florals that she's tied in on this James page. She's added application at the bottom of the James page. She wrote, it is so important to not just stuff our heads with knowledge and become puffed up, but to live out what we learn, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. I love that. That's timeless application. Like I always talk about. Oh, wow. Okay. I love that, Alana. Let's see. What is this? This is first Peter chapter five at the very beginning of chapter five. She wrote in a color where you can still see the scripture popping through it, but she wrote a summary statement right there on top of the scriptures, commands for elders and leaders. I love that. I really want to go try that now because what that does is when you're flipping through, you can visually see, and I'm such a visual learner. I will probably remember first Peter five the rest of my life now because I saw this in your Bible. Okay, and then on this yellow sticky note, she wrote, summary of chapter three. It starts with submission, what truly makes a woman beautiful and rules for husbands, desiring what's righteous. And she gave like a little verse, like a simple outline. I love that. Ooh, and over here, first Peter four, she's put a cross reference, second Timothy. Love it. So on Colossians two, 13 and following, she boxed it up and said, memorize. I would love to do that and then write dates next to a verse when I've completed memorizing it. And that way it would like kind of keep me accountable in future years when I flip by to be like, oh, do I still have that memorized? Okay, first of all, your floral doodles are gorgeous. I love them. And then she does so much beautiful summarization, plays on color, writing cross references on the sticky note. She wrote cross references for the chapters. I love that. Okay, finally, we got a little video from Nikki. This is Nikki Drake from Crazy Simple Truth Ministries here on YouTube. Good friend. Love you to death, Nikki. Hello, Faith and your peeps. Hey, Nikki here. And I wanted to give you an idea of something new I've been trying this week. I have had kind of an experiment or an experience or a, I don't know what it is, but I've been trying to set aside all of my Bible study tools and I'm the crazy Bible study lady. So, you know, I have lots of tools and set them aside completely and just study the word of God with God. And it has been an amazing, experiment. So I want to challenge you to try to go through a chapter. Um, the one I've been working on is Ephesians. So go through it. Just highlight God and the pronoun referring to him. So him and his. Highlight all the titles of God and then highlight any prepositions that come before his name. So of and in and through and from. And you will be amazed at what you learn about our savior. So I challenge you to do that. Check it out. Give it a try. I know I'm crazy. I try these new unique things, but I think you'll like it. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. Bye. I love that, Nikki. 
I love that because you're focusing on what God did, what God is doing. Prepositions can be so helpful and we often overlook them. That is a great suggestion. Thank you, Nikki. Wow. If you guys don't follow her, I'll make sure to have her channel linked down below in the description box. Guys, if you wanna be in a future video just like this where I look at your Bible journaling pages, I will have my email down below at the very bottom of my description box. You can just email me at any time. I will save it for a future video and plan to use it, Lord willing. Guys, if you wanna see more Bible journaling ideas or times where I've totally messed up or things that have actually been super awesome but a little messy, check out this playlist here. Or if you guys would like to hear about how I study the Bible, how I use what I'm learning in seminary or as a pastor's wife to grow in my relationship with the Lord, click this playlist here and I will see you guys in these videos. Bye guys.